Here is my review for The Legend of Korra Season 3, Episode 9, entitled The Stakeout. Link is description below to where you can go and watch the episode. It's at nick.com if you haven't already watched the episode, of course. But, uh, yeah. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this review. So, Team Avatar continues to track down Aiway, and they follow him all the way to an oasis. One thing we find out is that there are wanted posters of Team Avatar now because of the Earth Queen. They find Aiway at an inn, and decide to watch over him until he goes and meets up with Sahir. Come to find out, the place that Aiway needs to go to isn't a physical area. It's actually in the spirit world. Korra goes in, sees Zaheer and Aiway. Zaheer throws Aiway in the fog of lost souls, and returns to talk to Korra. And so, the conversation that they have is a very interesting one because we get the reasons why Zaheer and the gang is doing what they're doing. And what they're doing is actually very interesting. They're not one-dimensional villains. They're not just here to just burn the world down. They actually have a good reason to why they do what they're doing. And apparently they're actually called the Red Lotus. So for now on, I'm going to call them the Red Lotus instead of Zaheer in the game because the Red Lotus is more than just Zaheer in the game. I was actually part of the Red Lotus. Someone else was a part of the Red Lotus. Like, his name was Unala, that boy, in Season 2. He was part of, uh, of the Red Lotus, and he did them d dirty. He did them really, really dirty. But let me go back a bit. So this guy named Jim Bao, this guy, he broke free from the White Lotus and created the Red Lotus, the group that the White Lotus sh was supposed to be in restoring freedom to this world. The White Lotus now, they're kind of dwindled down to just protecting the Avatar, and they have really, really weak vendors, honestly, in, in that group at this point. They're not the same kind of group they used to be. The White Lotus kind of pretty much follow corruption in some cases, too. So what Zaheer believes true freedom is, is basically chaos and disarray. He wants to rid the world of this oppressive government and separation of nations. I mean, he wants to bring back the world to just the, the simplest form as it possibly can. But, again, that brings chaos and disarray which is death, and, and how is this really true balance? This is freedom. This is freedom because you'll be able to do whatever you want, whenever you want, and however you want to do it. You know, not there, there is no rules and regulations that, that stop you from doing, doing what you want. So, I mean, in the end, that is what true freedom is. But this, this is what's kind of interesting because this ideology is very interesting. And um, I, I want to ask you guys, are you down with what Zaheer is trying to do? Or are you kind of against what he's trying to do? Because his ideal, his ideals are not necessarily wrong. Because, I mean, look at the Earth Queen, for instance. The Earth Queen is very corrupt. And she just doesn't give a crap. Like, she just wants to... You know, she sees all these people as peasants and stuff and just control everything. And then we got the incompetence of uh, the Republic City president as well that's there. And he's, you know, not really doing... He, he's not doing that well either. It's just like... We have these kind of governments here, and, not, and yet they're saying that they, basically this, that shouldn't be there because people can't be free. They can use, you know? So it's just like, I can see where he's coming from with this, but at the same time, humans kind of need order to survive, to thrive, you know? To be able to be something because we have this kind of world where everything is quote-unquote free here. We're still not technically free because this will become like a doggy -e dog world. You know, only the strong survive in this type of world because then every, people will, just, will be dying left and right. I mean, that's not really true balance then. I mean, that's, again, that's freedom, but it's not necessarily balance. And I'm, I don't know. It's, it's, it's very interesting on this point because Korra is listening to him. Korra is seeing that he's not all wrong. And the thing is that he actually agrees with what Korra did when it came to opening the spirit gates back open, letting the spirits actually be out and everything like that. Because... Apparently, Zaheer thought Juan was wrong as Juan was wrong as well. So, like I said, his ideology is interesting. I love this because he's not a one-dimensional villain. I am very glad for that, and I'm glad that actually it just kind of explains everybody because they're part of the Red Lotus. So, I just it, I really, 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 really love this, and I love this episode. This is actually my favorite of the season so far because we got to see. You and know what exactly their objective is. Now, we still don't know when it comes to Korra. We don't know what's going to happen to Korra. Uh, I mean, I'm not really sure what exactly he's trying to do. I don't know if he's, if he's actually trying to kill her or not. I, I don't know what it is, because he didn't specify. So there's still that mystery. But, as I said, i got to ask you guys again. Do you think what Zaheer is doing is right, or do you think it's wrong? Because like I said, for me, I believe it's, it's, it's still wrong because we still need order in the world. We still need something, some structure. We have to have structure. Without structure, it, it just, again, we won't still, we, it won't be balanced, you know. It's, and it still won't necessarily be free. It's still hard to say. It's, I mean, it's more free than, than what other people are actually having right now, I'll say. But it still won't be free because then you be ruled by fear. 
You know, you still won't be able to do what you want, necessarily want to do. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. What is true freedom then? Is 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 the thing here, and that's that's the question I guess of the day for this re this review. What is true freedom? But um, I want to talk quickly when it comes to Unalak because Unalak did Zaheer in the game very dirty. Because <laughs> basically he came up with a plan to actually steal Korra at a very young age. You know when she was a kid, and he wasn't there at the time, and he erased his involvement of that plan. And they took all the brunt of that, and that's why they went to jail. And he got to be scot-free scot and do whatever he wanted to do, which was become the Dark Avatar and so on and so forth. He didn't, he, like, that was not part of the Red Lotus's plan. So, I, I love that, too, because they actually added and incorporated what um, the second season was doing. I just I just love how they did that. It, it, was, it was real nice, really, really clean. I'm like, yeah, all right. Okay. Okay, so, and, and Lunar, that was just dirty, man, because basically he just used them. He just used them to, to lock them up, and so he could maybe do what he wanted to do. Maybe he was restricted in some ways when working with uh, the Red Lotuses or something. Maybe, I don't know. I just know I would love to know who else is actually in the Red Lotus now, because we got some really, really strong benders in the Red Lotus. I mean, that's what the White Lotus used to have. They used to have strong benders, and now they just got all these weak punks up in there, but, uh, yeah. So at the end of this episode, Korra and Asami are captured by the Earth Queen. We see the Dai Li, and I was like, oh, I was wondering what happened because the thing is, the um that Earth dude with lava was uh, going to go after uh, Korra and Asami, and I'm sitting here like, I saw these tents come up, and I'm sitting here like, how the heck he get over there already? Like how you do that? But no, no, that wasn't him. It was actually the Earth Queen. And so I was like, okay, thank you. Woo! Because I'm, I'm about to say something. I'm about to get mad. And Mako and Bolin are actually captured by the Red Lotus, so I'm curious of what they're going to try to do because they're going to go to the Earth, um, the Earth Kingdom. Uh, bossing say and we're gonna I, guess, I don't know are they actually gonna try to fight to get them out of there like I'm curious how this is all gonna go I'm, I'm actually very curious how it's all gonna go I look forward to seeing next week's episode this is gonna be interesting very very interesting last thing I kind of want to discuss is this whole bone-in learning lava bending and everything because like, I had a lot of comments actually on my last review talking about this and I'm just sitting here like I, I don't know how would he possibly ever learn that because he would have no teacher to teach him this and it would just kind of happen randomly and I don't know, I, don't, I hate when things just happen randomly like that. So I don't know if you'll ever actually get that um, lava bending. Maybe there could be a good reason how we can end up getting it. I don't know, but at this point in time, he needs to get some type of ability, either lava or metal bending, because he needs some secondary ability here, because as we know, uh, Mako has lightning, which he never uses for some reason, and then Korra, she, she pretty much has everything, and you know, she, he needs something else too, so... He has to get something, so I do look forward to seeing what will happen with him. Maybe this will... Actually, seeing as he's, a... actually, he's captured with the Red Lotus and he's there, maybe he might learn it, actually. Maybe he can watch it enough and somehow end up doing it or something. Maybe copy it. We don't know. It's just it's very interesting. So, yeah, I'm done. Leave your comments below and tell me what you think of this week's episode of The Legend of Korra. Like, like this review and subscribe to my channel if you want to see some more Legend of Korra reviews from me, The Breakmaster. So, yeah, it's been The Breakmaster. And until then, people, break out.